und äh, das passt. Okay, alles klar. Hi, Clarice. Hi, Ian. How are you doing? <laughs> good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. So hey, we how's have, it going? Uh, we have Moritz here ready for you. Hi, Moritz. How are you? How you, how you been? Hi, Ian. Uh, I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's a pleasure to talk to you again. Uh, I don't know if you remember it. Uh, I think it was in February 2020 we had the last interview. But yeah, it was only yeah. by phone. And it was yeah. one of the coolest interviews of my career so far. And whenever someone uh, talks to me, oh, you work at the radio station, what's the coolest interview you ever had? I say, you and me saw from Billy Chan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank hey, you, man. That means a lot. That's, that's maybe too much honey for the start. Uh, All right. <laughs> I, uh, I remember speaking to you uh, last year, yeah. All right. Uh, how are you and where are you right now? It looks like uh, uh, you've got a lot of books there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm just at uh, my my home right now. Uh, it just uh, I've been well, you know. Like we um, we did uh, probably three shows this year, which is not a lot of shows, but uh, you know we're you, I couldn't be happier that we were actually able to play. Um, yeah. And uh, we did the Andy Kim Christmas show, which is like a, a fundraising show for KMH uh, here in Toronto. They they've been uh, doing it for 17 years and. And that was really fun. We got up and played two songs, and uh, we got to play with Alex Lifeson from Rush. And uh, yeah, it was really, really cool. We did a Stairway to Heaven and Battle of Evermore uh, with a oh. bunch of other great Canadian musicians. Very cool. Wow. Okay, that's a historic moment, I guess, even for you. I mean, yeah. uh, playing Led yeah. Zeppelin songs with Rush? What the fuck? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Huge um, Rush fans. Okay, last time uh, we talked about Forgiveness 1 and 2 and of course yeah. uh, about the chapters and Michael Maxis and the UFC fighters and uh, as actors and all that stuff and it was, yeah. Um, this time uh, we're going to talk, uh, of course, about the new record, Crisis of Faith, uh, which will finally be released in January. Yeah. Um, I want to know everything about the record, of course, but first, uh, what is the band up to at this time of the year? I mean, besides buying gifts for Christmas and everything. Um, that's pretty much it buying gifts for Christmas. <laughs> we're, uh, yeah, we, we just, uh, so that show was last week and now we're kind of, uh, uh, sort of taking a break for family for the holiday season. And, uh, and then we're going to start rehearsing in January again for our upcoming Canadian tour. All right. Um, what has changed for you as a professional musician since December, 2019, since the COVID shit came up first? Um, well, I, I, yeah, I haven't felt like much of a musician since then because we haven't really been able to play. Right. But, uh, for the most of part of the, the bigger part of 2020, um, I was uh, finishing up our record. Right. So, um, we were just, you know, business as usual, going to the studio every day. We had to work a little differently, uh, during, uh, COVID. So, uh, you know, it would just be one on more one on one type thing. Uh, ben and I in a room recording his vocals, uh, me doing my vocals by myself, or me and an engineer in the studio. Um, so that changed things a bit. Uh, normally, you know, we'd all be hanging out at the studio together. And, um, but uh, yeah, it, uh, it was an interesting record to make in that manner, you know different different workflow of course but i have yeah, to admit sure. I, I i didn't hear anything i mean it sounds like a real billy talent record and it got your dna so um yeah you, you made it somehow um of course, oh awesome uh, oh thanks thank you <laughs> of course you know the feeling shortly before an album release i mean it's number six for you and billy talent and yeah you played in some other bands before and um yeah i guess it's all done and finished post-production final touch and everything but um yeah, we live in troubled times and maybe uh, what else was different for you? I mean, yeah, working alone all the time, did it, did it affect the way you, you played or anything? I think um, what was different was that we were kind of reacting um, in real time. Uh, m you know, most of the time when, you, when you're recording a record, you just, you have the songs ready, at least for us. Uh, I like to have all the songs ready and and lyrics uh, mainly finished and and then we go uh, record it to to the best of our abilities but uh with this record having all that extra time to finish it um we were we were able to change things like some of the lyrics changed a lot of the lyrics uh, uh reflected the times we're in right now um 
like they might have started somewhere else. And uh, as the pandemic went on, uh, Ben and I started changing uh, lyrics to kind of reflect how we're feeling in this situation and how others might feel. So it, the pandemic definitely had a, an influence on the on the uh, recording of the record for sure in that way. That's that's really interesting because yeah. I, I thought of that and then I thought, no, they had finished all the songs before all that COVID shit came. So <laughs> be. But of course, yeah. you changed the lyrics. Why not? OK, um, yeah. I want to know more about the, the songwriting. I know uh, every song, every song has a, a special own story. But um, could you summarize how it went this time? I mean, under those more difficult uh, conditions. Um, with, well, like most of our records, like I, I usually demo um, all the songs myself. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I always, I'll start writing on guitar first and then I'll kind of trim down, um, the best ideas and then, then work them into songs. And then I usually demo them, uh, play them for the other guys and, uh, and get their opinions and takes on them. And, and, uh, then, you know, we'll start working on the best songs out of, uh, what I present, um, uh, Ben and I will start working on lyrics and, and so usually the music's all always done first so we can start recording and then and then Ben and I will chip away at the lyrics uh, as it goes. Um, all right. So yeah, so that's that's kind of like the process. Okay. I mean, every Billy Talent fan knows that you have a special role in the band, uh, especially when it comes to production and everything, but um, yeah, even when it comes to songwriting, I mean, you always have a saying in in the lyrics, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it'll start with the lyrical idea, um, which I kind of call the umbrella of the song. Like that, that'll be the theme. Like if I have an idea that, uh, um, like I beg to differ is a good example because I I was just singing this uh, line in my head. This will get better. Um, you, you know, when you have those moments of uh, you're not feeling so great, and you know it, they you you just kind of start singing a mantra to yourself so that was kind of like the banner to me and then i was writing a song around that um so when when ben and i work on the lyrics it it you know it, all of that supports that kind of uh, theme or banner um so yeah. that song ironically that was one of the songs that was written before the pandemic um we had lyrics for that done so it was just strange how it seems to also feel right for that time when the pandemic and lockdown happened. You know what I mean? A lot of people, I was noticing a lot of comments saying this, I really need this song right now. And it, and it was, it was interesting because it, it was perfectly fitting for uh, when the pandemic first hit. Yeah, I gotta admit, I was singing that song in my mind for myself a lot of times <laughs> during the <laughs> pandemic. This yeah. will get better. Yeah, it's, totally. It's a great, great uh, melody and everything. Um, End of Me, probably my favorite song of the year 2021, a perfect uh, rocking pop song, if I may call it that, yeah. with a beautiful melody, of course. Um, the original title was Hendrix plus Weezer. Is that correct? Yeah, um, so that, that, that's what I was calling it for the longest time. Like I have a chart at the studio that I normally have uh, tentative song titles, kind of uh, whatever I'm thinking. Like if I don't have a lyric, then I'll then I'll just write down what it sounds like to me, the closest thing it sounds like. And to me that uh, the opening riff, closest thing it sounded like was Hendrix and then the heavy part, uh, it was Weezer. So I was calling it Hendrix was Weezer for the longest time. Um, and, uh, the only, the line I had in the song was the end of me. I kept singing over and over. So Ben and I had a, it was a bit of a challenge to, to kind of write the song around that, uh, banner statement. And, and, uh, it, I thought what we came up with that worked really well. It, it basically, the song is everyone has that friend in life that you really care about and love and you've, you've known for a long time, but they just, they need help. And um, <laughs> and you can't change them, though, it, they'll you, you know, no matter how hard you try, like you won't be able to change them. So it's a bit about that kind of toxic relationship with that with that friend. But you still yeah. care about them at the end of the day. So it's a, it's poking fun at them a little bit, but also in a caring way. 
Yeah, uh, I, I love your guitar solo, by the way, and I love the part uh, in the video when you come with that, what is it on your head, a goat head, I don't know, <laughs> and then this, <laughs> uh, this UFO crashes behind you, that's such a great action movie, that, I, I yeah. freaking love it. The video was actually uh, created by Liam Lynch, and he, he played all the characters in that himself. So he did this uh, basically all on green screen in his, his own studio. Um, so it's not actually us in the video or me in the video, but uh, it's really, really cool what he did. And, uh, and uh, uh, his style is so interesting and funny. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. I love the video. Absolutely. It's great. Um, <laughs> Thanks. And uh, yeah, I wanted to say something different. Ah, yeah. How does it feel for you? I mean, uh, the song gets a lot of airplay in Germany. I don't know how it's in Canada and the US, I guess the same. Yeah, it's done, it's so... done very well here too. And um, it, it, that song is what is probably my favorite on the record. Uh, um, I, I don't know why. It's just uh, something I've uh, like one of those songs that uh, remind you of your your teenage years or something. For me, at least when grunge hit, like and, and there was all these heavy guitars and and uh, uh, I got to use a lot of my fuzz pedals on that song and and make the guitars big and loud. So so it's one of my favorites for sure. Yeah. I guess it must it must be cool when you go to a gas station or shopping, whatever, and you, you hear your song in the background. Yeah, it happens a lot with that one, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I've heard it on uh, quite a few radio stations now. And, uh, and and just to make it even extra special, like we had Rivers Como from Weezer singing on it. Um, and that was that was incredible, too. Just, uh, you know, we 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 came full circle with the song because as uh, teenagers, again, like, or in our early 20s, I guess, like we were huge Weezer fans, like when the Blue Album and Pinkerton came out. And I saw them first touring the Blue Album at the Opera House here in Toronto. And they just played that album from front to back. And and so this is like a super full circle moment for us. You just called him and he said instantly, yes, of course, <laughs> I'm going to come over. We're going to record that. All right, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was actually, it went through our managers. Uh, ben had suggested man this this uh rivers como would sound awesome on this like what, what do you think about reaching out and i i of course I, you know i'm i'm always the uh uh <laughs> glass half empty guy in the band so it's uh i was like oh there's no way he's gonna sing on this i mean he's he, he's rivers como from weezer um and surprisingly we got an email back and and he uh he loved the song and, and wanted to try some things out so uh, about a month later, his engineer sent his vocal takes, and and they were amazing, like so right. good, very silky, uh, everything you'd expect from his vocal. Okay, I'm afraid time is running, and I got so many questions left, and I guess your manager will uh, do this in oh, a no, few minutes. So I would good. like Take to talk time. about some other songs uh, that haven't yeah. been released yet. Um, the Wolf um, sounds like. Uh, real masterpiece for me i mean i love it uh how the orchestral elements come up here and there and then they're getting stronger till the end to this big uh, final uh, yeah goose thank pump you. explosion and <laughs> oh thank you yeah, thank you i want to know more about the wolf that was a uh i mean it, it was a difficult song to write uh, lyrically the music came together really fast for me almost like the probably the quickest in a long time but it just started in uh, on a guitar on that opening guitar riff, and then it, uh, it all the other parts just came to me really fast. Um, and it had such a somber uh, feel to it. Uh, the lyric lyrically, uh, Ben and I wanted to write about uh, uh, someone that's going through a terminal illness, and um, the song was inspired by uh, I don't know if you know the the Canadian band, the Tragically Hip, but uh, there's uh, the singer Gord Downey um, was diagnosed with a terminal illness, um, and uh, as he for his you know for his final uh, few months left with us, he decided to go across the country and tour with his his band and and play these farewell shows, and it was that incredible just just the fact that he would do that. Uh, we wanted to kind of translate into the lyrical matter of the song because it. It was very special and meant something to us and, and meant something to the country. Yeah, I know the tragically hip. It's it's so strange yeah. that you mentioned them because yeah, okay, uh, yeah, it's the favorite band of uh, the guitar player of my band. Funny thing. Oh okay, wow. Okay. Um, okay. Next song, uh, judged with under yep. two minutes. Uh, it's a real punk rocker. It's 
Yeah, we haven't we haven't awesome. we haven't done a song like that in in a long time. We just wanted to do something a, a minute and a half punk rock, Black Flag kind of uh, punk uh, fast song, and uh, and it, and yeah, lyrically it's just a, a full on. You know, it's probably the most angry track on the record, and obviously directed at uh, 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 Donald Trump. Um, and uh, and this this kind of uh, rise of nationalism uh, that seems to have happened in the last five years. Um, so it's it's just a basic basic uh, aggression filled kind of punk song. Yeah, you're much closer to that in Canada than we are in Germany. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah um, okay, uh, hanging out with all the wrong people. Uh, that reminds me of my friends. Um, really loved the refrain, and uh, yeah, you you really sharpened your signature sound. That's what came to my mind first when I listened to it. It's it's the bass and everything how it goes together. It's uh, you, you only have to listen to it like a half second, and you know it's really done. Oh, cool. Okay, <laughs> that's that's cool. Yeah, the, the, some of the chords in that um, I I you you know I played a lot on the second album. It's got like some worker beast type. Uh, uh, stylings, but uh, yeah, that album was uh, or that song was was really fun to write. Um, it was one of the you know funner songs on the record, and 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 it has a, a really interesting rhythmic feel to it. Um, and it's it, yeah, it's just one of those things. You know, when when I was a kid, you know, your your mom, my mom would say that to me, "Don't be hanging out with all the wrong people." And I th always thought that was funny, and it made me realize like, how do people get to where the, you know how did Trump get to where he is like in life and all the all the things that he's now done and uh, so the song again is like just you know what what happens I guess when you're hanging out with all the wrong people or how do you get there you know all right uh, one less problem that one sounded like a real therapy song for COVID for me somehow I thought yeah that's just how I feel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that's one of the songs where the lyrical matter changed a lot. Like I, I, I you know, uh, when Ben and I were writing it, we had a different um, subject matter in, in mind. And then once the pandemic happened, that's just how we felt. It was uh, it, it was uh, and it felt good to write that song. It felt good to feel like, uh, you know, the age we are now and, and now, it's, you know, just to kind of vent. Um, in, in that form, one less problem. I want to wake up to one less problem because it seems like there's another problem <laughs> happening every day. Um, so it's it's kind of like this anxiety filled uh, midlife crisis song, if if I may. <laughs> That's why I like it so much. I'm yeah, twenty three, uh, oh, thirty three now. Uh, all right, last one uh, for you. Uh, not a suicide ballad like uh, like it's the case with uh, Bruce Springsteen's. For you, it's more. Um, really romantic love song with lyrics that aren't cheesy at all and that's pretty difficult i guess yeah that that was uh we wanted to end the album uh with that tra track specifically because it has uh such a it's basically um it's written for written for someone that you unconditionally and, and have undying love for um for me it was my mother who sadly passed uh last year in may and uh, for Ben, it was his uh, uh, daughter that uh, he became a father for the first time uh, just prior to that in 2019, late 2019. So uh, both of us had different sources of inspiration for that song. And, and we kind of put it together, all the things that you would do, no matter how uh, crazy they sounded, um, all the things you would do for somebody to fight, fight for someone that you love. And um, it all came out in, in that format for that song. All right. Um, may I ask you, where did you record the album? The same studio as usual? I mean, I know you got a Billy Talent's headquarter, but uh, yeah, you have every, your own studio there. It's yeah, every, we have. Oh, yeah, okay. We have a we have our own studio. Um, we probably own, owned our building for about eleven years now. So we've done the last the last two records, Afraid of Heights, and this one. We recorded everything there uh, except for the drums. Like the drums that we go to another studio down the street because they have a, a big, it's a really big room so we can get room sounds. But everything else is done at uh, our, our headquarters and it's basically the same space that we rehearse at. But uh, when, we, when we're recording a record, obviously we change, you can't really rehearse in there because it's just like gear and, and uh, you know, like padding and things that, that uh, you know, will, will uh, be good, better for acoustics in the room. All right. 
and you just call it the headquarter, right? Hey, Ben, we're going to meet at the headquarter in 10 minutes. Yeah. No, we, we call it the, the, we just call it the, uh, the studio. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, how long, how long did it all take? I mean, yeah, with, uh, with COVID-19 and rewriting lyrics and everything, how much uh, time did you invest into the record? It's, it's hard to say because we started the album in August of 2019 and we put up forgiveness um, uh, in November, right? And then the plan was to have the album finished and, and out by the summer of 2020 and be touring. But when everything started getting postponed and we, we went into lockdown, um, we just stopped working because we, we know everyone's afraid to be around each other in case uh, they got COVID. Um, so we would start, you know, we, we, we would work when we weren't in the middle of a peak of the pandemic, when a wave, you know, when it was okay to work, we'll work. And then, uh, when we went into another wave, we, we'd, uh, kind of shut it down again. So over the course of 2020 on and off, we made the record and then it was probably finished, uh, earlier this year, uh, up until April is when we were doing mass mixers, mixes and masters. All right. Um, yeah. Are there any funny mistakes, accidents, or stories from the studio worth telling? I don't know. <laughs> something always happens, right? Um, I would say, well, we we originally recorded the we we recorded "End of Me" with Ben singing everything, and uh, um, so that and it was finished and mixed and mastered, and and then uh, when uh, Rivers uh, uh, said yes to singing, we did, we had to you know we just put his vocals in and, and then got it remixed and remastered. So, so that, that song was already like, well done, probably a year earlier <laughs> with Ben's vocals. Um, otherwise, yeah, not many stories this time because it was just, you know, myself in a room or myself and Ben in a room. So norm normally, you know, funny things happen when the whole band is there hanging out, but Maybe we're going to hear the version with only Ben singing in a few years when you open up your vaults like the Rolling Stones yeah. and say, ah, well, still, we got that one without Rivers Cuomo and we can release it. Yeah, Maybe. <laughs> yeah we'll, okay. we'll, put, we'll put it out at some point, I'm sure. Um, I was watching the chapters, uh, the short movies, how are you going to call them? Uh, I was watching them like a little child. I don't know. Normally, I would care about something uh, like a mix-up of uh, people like ancient warriors with bows and arrows, and then there comes a motorbike and everything, a motorcycle. Normally, yeah. um, that would maybe, uh, yeah, I would say, oh, that's trashy or something, but I found it strangely entertaining and thrilling <laughs> and a little bit disturbing, um, yeah. to be honest. And I, of course, I don't understand the whole story because it's not finished yet. But uh, one question that really bothers a lot of fans, I guess, is, uh, when the whole album is released, uh, are we really going to have um, a full, an actual movie made by you and with the soundtrack made by you? Is that really going to happen? <laughs> It'll happen. Yeah, yeah. We're we're actually still, uh, you know, we're working on the the other episodes. Michael Maxis has been sending us cuts, and and, and um, you will see something uh, probably. I'm, we're hoping at least when, by the time the record comes out, or if not after. But uh, yeah, this was uh, uh, you know, an idea to collaborate with Michael Maxis, who's who's done uh, some uh, some of our best videos, Viking Death March, and he did uh, Saint Veronica, and uh, we wanted to make a short film and uh, use our music in it. So he kind of created this apocalyptic world with um, with Rose Namajunas and and Cowboy Caron, who are UFC fighters that he's friends with. Um, and it turned out really cool, and and the music is used in uh, in really cool ways. So there there is an an ending, and uh, we're just you know we're going through the cuts and edits of it now, and and we're, we'll have something soon for next year. I think. All right, don't sell yeah. it to Netflix. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, another question: uh, Who played the drums? Was Aaron capable to do it or uh no jo uh, jordan hastings uh, played drums on this record um aaron he he's you know he's at a good place right now but not still not enough to be able to perform in the studio on a number of songs uh um he can get up and play uh, you know a few songs with us live here and there but uh it's uh, it's really up to how he's feeling and and um so go making a record especially when you're tracking drums you're it you know, it takes a lot of takes and practice and rehearsal, which is a, a lot, just too much on him physically. So, um, but maybe, you know, maybe there will be a day when, when we do that again. But uh, yeah, Jordan uh, Hastings played on the record from Alexa. All right. 
Um, yeah, because of Corona, you you had a lot of extra time, and uh, I know um, yeah some some bands released an album all every two years, and you had like five years, and the fans are really waiting. I just wanted to ask if you maybe use the extra time for songwriting, if there's already something else uh, coming up uh, at the horizon, or if you could tell us, uh, okay, it's not going to be another five years, you're going to have to wait for the <laughs> next record after <laughs> Crisis of Faith. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think it'll be another five years. I'm, um, I'm always writing, so I have, uh, you know, several song ideas, like even after this record finished, I'm always writing, and and uh, there's there's I, already, I always have enough songs for another album um, ready. So it's, it's more a question of like, can you know, when it's OK to do we have a, a block of time to record an album? Because we we're usually touring a lot or there's a pandemic happening. So so, uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I think I don't think it'll be another five year wait. All right. That sounds good. Uh, last time we talked about your favorite guitar player, Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin, and how you once met him. I think it was a dressing room or anything. Um, this time I want to know um, if you could perform one song together, which song would it be? It could be a song from Billy Talent or from Led Zeppelin or something else. Um, with Jimmy Page? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, I would. Uh... <laughs> um... I would probably want to, yeah, I'd probably want to perform uh, Days and Confused. It's it's one of my favorite riffs, like of all time. Just to just to play that song with them would be fantastic. All right. Yeah. Um, you also told me the first record you ever bought, I think it was uh, Ramones, or, and then you bought the Beatles, Twist and Shout. And yeah. This time I want to know uh, what was the last record you bought. Oh wow! Last physical record I bought. Um, yeah, or, or or the last album you really liked, the last record you you listened to from another band you really liked. Oh okay, uh, the latest uh, Idols record, Crawler. I've been listening to that; it's really good. Um, that's probably the last thing I listened to. Yeah, check it out if you haven't. They're an awesome band. It's nice of you making. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know the word. No, I don't care. Um, every Christmas we play like uh, 80 full records in a row at Regenbogen 2. We call it Meilensteine Marathon. Yeah. Uh, Beatles, Stones, Queen, Bowie, Foo Fighters, also Nirvana, Pearl Jam, stuff from the 90s. Also a lot of Canadian acts like Steppenwolf, Saga, or Brian Adams. Um, I know I'm still trying to add Billy Talent 2 to those milestones because, um, yeah, it, it's, oh, getting, wow, yeah. it's getting there. Getting there uh, yeah. I would like to know uh, three personal milestones from the past uh, from you, like classic rock, AOR, or crunch, I don't care, punk rock, whatever, yeah, let's say older than 21 years. Um, I think just being in this band for 28 years. <laughs> Like the the four of us have been in this band since 1993, and uh, so July of this year, July is when we started the band in 1993, and uh, um, I'll you know I'll never forget that phone call when Ben called me out of the blue, and he was like, "Hey man, what's going on? What are you doing?" And 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 their previous band was breaking up, him, John, and Aaron's, and and um, so was mine at the same time. So we just they came over and jammed. So that. So this July was the 28th, and we'll we'll probably do something special for our 30th anniversary. Okay, yeah, I, I think I maybe um, I, I was saying that wrong. Um, I was uh, I would like to know if you got like three records from the past, like uh, I don't know, classic rock. From, oh, oh, uh, like classic from, rock. Yeah, British Invasion or whatever, whatever. Th three yeah. uh, records that that you really yeah you love. Um, probably. Uh... Let's see, my favorite oldies would probably be actually Slayer, Rain and Blood. I've been listening to that a lot. Yeah. And that's that that came in like late 80s. Um, uh, All right. uh, what else? Here? And that's sorry, that's a weird one because it's probably too heavy for your station. Yeah. But <laughs> I know um, I was thinking about classic rock more. Yeah, but um... I would say uh, give them enough rope by the clash. Like that's probably my favorite clash record um especially the song uh uh european home safe european home um and tommy gun are two of my favorites on that one but uh that that record really really kind of solidified my my uh you know love for the clash it sounded better than the first album and it, it had everything uh that was the first album was about uh, the punk rock kind of ethic ingrained in that album 
So that would be one of my favorites. And then uh, Bad Motor Finger by Soundgarden is one of my favorite records of all time. And I think they just uh, celebrated it. I think it was uh, their, this year was 30 years. Um, Cause it came out in 91, I believe, right? Yeah, I think you're yeah. right. Um, yeah, so yeah, just, yeah, that that record's so good. Yeah, Rusty Cage just, and uh, and uh, Jesus Christ pose. Ninety-one was a, a great year for an Rush. amazing yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> so many good records that year. All right, uh, I'm coming to an end. Um, next chance for us Europeans uh, to see you guys live is in April. You will come to London. That's the only uh, date on your website uh, on European land, as far as I checked it, right? Yeah, so far. But we're planning more dates uh, um, in and around Germany. So we'll, we'll, you, just keep listening. We'll, we'll be announcing something shortly. All right. And I yeah. saw your support band is Rise Against. I really love yeah. those guys. Uh, I guess you like them too. <laughs> yeah, we've been friends with them for a long, long time. And, and actually the first tour we did across Canada uh, back, this goes back to like 2007 or eight. Um, we crossed the country with them. And then we, we were with them in uh, the US as well. We supported them for probably two, two or three tours. And uh, and so to do it again, it's like it, it, you know, made perfect sense. Like they're they're just really good, good guys, good friends, and and our music uh, and our fans uh, work, work well together. All right, thank you so much for your time. And if there's anything I forgot to ask, and uh, yeah, just say it. Otherwise, uh, it was a pleasure to talk to you again. I hope, yeah. I hope we have a third time, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Yeah, it's all, always a pleasure to talk to you. And. Uh, yeah, our new record, uh, Crisis of Faith, comes out uh, in January. Finally, after <laughs> uh, after all of these years, or a year and a half, I guess. So January 21st. Yeah. 21st yeah. I forgot to mention that. Damn. Oh, that's okay. You're right. <laughs> okay, thank you so much and greetings to Canada. And uh, till next time. Bye bye. No problem, man. Nice, nice to talk to you again. <laughs> thank you, Mark. Right. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Bye.